As fun as it is sometimes to watch speedruns strategically use game-breaking tricks to make a 50-odd hour game as short as a few hours long, it's not something that most people like to try and do the first time that they play through a title. But that doesn't mean that you can't still break the game outright even when you're not trying to. So with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 ways players accidentally broke video games. Number 10, pretending to have a bike, Pokemon Red slash Blue. While Pokemon isn't a game just for kids, it is a game with a huge young player base. And while it's unfair to say that kids are more likely to do dumb things, it is fair to say that they find perhaps a greater sense of amusement in doing slightly impractical things. Largely because they haven't got as used to the tropes of gaming as many older players have. This in mind then, it's easy to imagine a kid repeatedly trying to get into Cycling Road, which takes up routes 16, 17 and 18 without a bicycle in Pokemon Red and Blue. Now this would be fine if it weren't for the fact that at a certain point, the game just gives up and lets you on the road anyways, because God loves a trier I guess. So while you can happily trot around Cycling Road this one time, you're likely a level way too low if you don't actually have a bike for it. Similarly, the fact that you've messed with the game script by walking into an area that you shouldn't be in can cause all sorts of other issues along the way, which is maybe what you get for tempting fate and going against Arceus's intentions. Number 9. Killing enemies before their time, Deus Ex One of the most interesting parts of Deus Ex is that, for the most part, you can take out the bosses without even properly fighting them. How? Well, as ever, by doing something silly thinking it won't work, only for it to work all too well. This is because the boss battles are proximity triggered, meaning that it only properly starts when you get close to the enemy. So if you manage to hurt or kill them from a distance, you'll find that they carry this damage or death through, meaning a casual pot shot at a boss can accidentally skip your skirmish with them. Now this isn't always possible of course, as certain bosses, like Anna Navari, have been designed seemingly to avoid this pitfall. But there's still a bunch of ways around them too, so if you've committed to the lovable rogue style of play, you'll likely still find a vaguely cop-out way to beat them. Now, it's interesting to think that with just one moment of wonder, you can discover something that makes huge sections of the game basically a cakewalk. Mercifully, this is a game that's easy to play more than once, so you can have a legit playthrough and a silly one as well. Number 8, playing around The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Goofing about is a crucial part of any gaming experience. I mean, everyone has at least thought about putting a bucket over an NPC's head to steal something right in front of their now covered eyeballs. Or some other similarly stupid but entertaining shenanigans. Sometimes this isn't even really a matter of getting anything out of it, but the pure reward of getting to mess around. As such, it's easy to imagine a player innocently messing around in Breath of the Wild, learning the shield surf mechanics, only to then accidentally clip themselves straight through a wall. Now, while speedrun players often use this to skip huge areas of the game, they do so with clear intentions of which walls to go through and exactly where to go. Should you manage to pull this off accidentally, then things can go very wrong very fast. Plenty of walls simply aren't meant to be walked through, that's why they're walls, leaving you either stuck outside the area you need to be in, or otherwise just stuck chilling out in the void. And yeah, yeah, it's easy to watch this and think, well, that would never happen to me. But that involves purposefully ignoring every silly thing you've ever done in a video game, and generally, there's always at least once that this happens. Number seven, Escaping Prison, Fantasy Star 3 While you're tasked with escaping from prison in Fantasy Star 3, many players likely had the same thought as to how to leave the area through less legit means. That's because before you get trapped, you're able to buy an item called the Escape Pipe, which allows you to escape from a dungeon upon use. For anyone struggling with figuring out how to escape the prison then, or just looking for an easier way to do so, I mean, after all, work smarter not harder, am I right? This seemed like a surefire way to leave the prison early and then continue the story a little quicker than otherwise. While the escape pipe does let you leave the prison early though, it's not so helpful with the second part. Though you've escaped, the game can't quite figure out how, and thus the dialogue you need to have to continue the story isn't accessible after this method of escape. Instead, you can only mourn that this creative route is effectively useless, and go back to your previous save. This one is at least at the beginning of the game though, so if things go wrong, you haven't ruined hundreds of hours of your life. Number 6. Moving in a cutscene, Half-Life 
being given the ability to move in a cutscene is a strange little gift. You're stuck in the cutscene, obviously, so you can't just leave, but it's also surprisingly nice to just be able to jitter yourself around a little bit while someone talks to you instead of being trapped in a total freeze frame. Well, it's nice until it accidentally breaks your game at least. In the original versions of Half-Life, however, moving in some scenes could actually risk you breaking the game entirely. In particular, when you get caught by Marines, moving can actually totally sabotage the game's script, leaving it unable to free you from your tiny, dark prison. Which is especially awkward if you don't realize and instead just wait around hopelessly for whatever comes next. After all, when stuff goes wrong, it doesn't give you a heads up about it and you wouldn't presume that the whole thing had just broken for you so you could be there a long time. Later editions of the game fix this issue, but likely only because so many poor souls sat in a dark room for way, way longer than they deserved. Number 5. Killing Strangers The Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind now, let it be known that this particular way of breaking Morrowind was more the game teaching you an important moral lesson. It's not a good idea to go out and kill people all willy-nilly. Because unlike later additions to the series, in Morrowind you can, theoretically, kill whoever you want. This sounds great in theory, as we've all had that one NPC we desperately wanted to see the back of, but in practice it had some pretty serious drawbacks. Should you be unfortunate enough to slay someone you needed for a quest, you'd be unable to finish it, since the person that you needed to chat with to continue or end it was now sort of a little bit busy being dead. If you were unlucky enough to have killed a person vital for the main quest, then this became infinitely, infinitely more worse. So if you made a habit of killing NPCs, or just happened to kill one by accident, this could mean that many, many hours later, you'd suddenly realize that they were secretly an important character, and you would have to either go back to the point you killed them, or just deal with never properly finishing the game. Safe to say, nobody enjoys making that choice. Number 4. Selling Your Stuff, Champions of Norris. RPGs have always been largely about organization, sorting all your characters to have abilities that fit with the rest of the team, making sure your equipment is tip top and just generally optimizing everything you can is basically RPG 101. As much as most players are desperately hated though, inventory management is also a big part of this. Making sure you have room for more drops and remembering to sell what you don't want to keep is vital for a whole lot of these games, not to mention the lion's share of most MMOs. And so it's especially cruel that Champions of Norrith punishes you for this, even if it does appear to be by total accident. See, after killing the suitably unnerving Spider Queen Sheloth, players who've remembered their teleport can quickly pop back to sell all the gross spider goodies that she just dropped, likely feeling pretty good about themselves for being so prepared. Only when they try to return to the boss area, they'll soon realize the key issue with this. The boss room is locked. Since an NPC opens this area for you, you're unable to unlock the door yourself, meaning it's time to do another RPG classic maneuver of desperately looking through all the save files to figure out which one you can use to restart. Number 3. Believing in the Green Lantern LEGO Batman 2 DC Superheroes When it comes to superheroes, Green Lantern is perhaps the most easily overlooked. This title, of course, used to belong to Aquaman, but since the DC film made the smart move of casting Jason Momoa as him, the fish puns have gently died down. As such, it is instead the unfortunate Emerald Protectors of the realm who now appear to many like dogs. But in LEGO Batman 2, Green Lantern can fly, which still serves to make him one of the more useful characters in the game. However, it turns out that relying on flying characters can have some major downsides, especially with Green Lantern, who the game seems to presume that you just won't want to play as at all. As such, in one particularly unwieldy section of the game, flying to the area's exit, which should allow you to go to the next area, Area, will just instead get you stuck there. Now at this point you might be thinking, is the game just freaking out that you chose to optionally play as a character who historically was weak to wood and the colour yellow? Or is it so delighted it just couldn't go on? We'll simply never know. Number 2. Losing Your Duster Psychonauts if you were one of the unlucky players to be graced with a bug that meant you lost your cobweb duster in Psychonauts, you likely didn't consider it a big deal at the time. You won't be able to get all the collectibles, but not everyone wants to go around finding every pesky hidden item anyway, so it's easy to realize that it's gone and just kind of shrug it off, you'll get it next time. Only, as it turns out, this is the worst thing you can do, because the final level requires you to get rid of some cobwebs to get through the fun of the nightmarish meat circus, meaning that if you don't have the duster, you can't clear the level and finish the game. 
But the duster is sold in the shop of the hub world, so it's no biggie, right? You can just go on and buy another and carry on with your life, happy as a person who just narrowly avoided a game-based despair. Well, unfortunately for you, at this point, you've gone beyond the time in the game where you can go to the shop, so unless you have a save file from before then, you're plumb out of luck. Number one, finishing the game, Batman Arkham Asylum. The first installment of the Arkham series is just about the perfect length to 100% complete. You won't find everything on your first roam around, but it also won't take worlds of time to scout around afterwards and find all the extra Riddler trophies after you've completed the game, and you can always just Google the riddles when and if you get sick of trying to figure them out. But with all silver linings come clouds, and this is no exception. That's because Arkham Asylum can have a uniquely heartbreaking bug, where all the saved data containing your adventures with the Spandex Crusader can become corrupted, forcing you to either restart the whole game from scratch or to quit in a fit of rage. Worse yet, the painful issue can be triggered by finishing the main story, meaning that you could finally experience the joy of finishing the game and its weird as hell final boss, only to find out that you've been blocked from getting that sweet 100% completion. And even if you bravely go back through all of it, you do so aware of an awful possibility that there's nothing to stop it happening again. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Did you ever encounter any of these game-breaking glitches? And are there any infuriating ones I missed off here? While you're down there as well, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.